Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Miss Danielson and today we're doing an introductory lesson to factors and the correct way to set up factor spiders and prime numbers. Let's get started. First of all, let's start with some definitions and you're going to want to write these down. Factors are whole numbers which evenly divide a value without producing a decimal answer. For example, the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6 because we can divide 6 by any of these values and we get a whole number answer. Factor pairs are the result of dividing some value by its factor pair. So for example, 6 divided by 2 equals 3. 2 and 3 are factor pairs of 6. Prime numbers are whole numbers which have precisely two factors. That's just one and that number itself. Because of course all values could be divided by one and when you divide any value by 1, your answer stays the same. So now that we've got the basics down, let's get into how do we find factors. We're going to use these factor spiders here. I hope nobody's afraid of spiders. It's just a visual way of recognizing our factors in order and knowing when we can stop once we found them all. So let's set up a factor spider for the factors of 18. First, we need to consider all of the possibilities all of the possible values we might try dividing 18 by. We could try any number between 1 and 18, because of course, if you divide 18 by some number bigger than 18, you're going to get a decimal answer. So these are my possible factors. That's not to say that they are all factors. We're going to try and find out. First, we'll start by looking at the lowest factor. And by dividing by that lowest factor, we find the highest factor pair. Now, as we said before, all values can divide by 1, so that's my lowest factor. And when I divide 18 by 1, the answer is 18, so that's my highest factor. That pair of factors belong together, like a pair of shoes. Notice how my spider has got a pair of red shoes, a pair of orange shoes, a pair of yellow shoes, and a pair of green shoes. Now, I don't want to mix those up. I want to keep them in order. So I'm going to put this pair of shoes on my factor spider. Here's my factor spider. 18 is the number I'm looking for the factors of, and I'm going to put a pair of shoes where the lowest factor is 1 and the highest factor is 18. See how that's nice and balanced on the left and right hand side? Let's keep going now. Find the next smallest factor, and its factor pair will be the next biggest factor. So looking at the possible factors, I'm looking at the next smallest number to try is 2. And I do see that 18 can divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 would be 9. If 9 is the next biggest factor, we skipped over 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. None of them could possibly be factors of 18. Because if they were, they would have a smaller factor pair somewhere between 1 and 2. And that would be a decimal value. So we're eliminating the possible factors quite quickly this way. Let's keep going. If we keep working from lowest to highest and highest to lowest, we will eventually meet in the middle. So now the only possible factors we could try are between 3 and 8. Our next smallest possible factor is 3, and 18 does divide by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. I've now eliminated the possible factors 7 and 8 because they're higher than 6 and I don't have a factor pair for them that's lower than 3. So the only two possible factors I have left to try are 4 and 5. Can I divide 18 by 4? No, not without getting a decimal answer. Can I divide 18 by 5? Nope. In that case, I've got all my factor pairs, or my pairs of factor shoes, on my spider, and notice that they're already in order from smallest to biggest. Starting from the left-hand side, I've got the factors 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. And I know I haven't missed any because I worked from the smallest up as well as the biggest down till I meet in the middle. Let's try a few examples to make sure you can do that. Feel free to hit pause here and try for yourself, but I'm going to keep going right through this. So for example 2, the factors of 12, I know that all values can divide by 1, so I'll start with that. 12 divided by 1 is 12. 
The next number I might try is the next smallest number, because I'm going in order here. 12 divided by 2, yes it does divide by 2, and that's 6. So there are no factors of 12 anywhere between 6 and 12. That's my next highest factor. What's my next lowest factor? After 2 comes 3, can I divide 12 by 3? Yes, I can. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. Well, that worked out nice because I have no other numbers to try. My next highest factor was 4, while my next lowest factor was 3, and there's no values between that. So those are my factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. How about for 54? Go ahead and try that for yourself if you like. So write 54 at the center of your spider and start with the smallest factors of 54. Hit pause if you like. I'm just going to keep going through. The smallest factor is always 1. And whenever you divide by 1, the value doesn't change, so the highest factor is always the number itself. So the next smallest factor would be 2, because 54, can 54 divide by 2? Yep. 54 divided by 2, that is 27. Next, I'll try 3. Can 54 divide by 3? Yes, it can. 54 divided by 3 is 18. What about 4? Can 54 divide by 4? No, no, it can't. 40 can divide by 4. 48 could divide by 4. The closest multiple of 4 that I can think of is 52. That's 4 times 13, but I can't divide 54 by 4. So what about 5? No, the closest multiple of 5 I can think of is 55, which would be 5 times 11. So what about 6? Yes, I can divide 54 by 6. 54 divided by 6 is 9. The only numbers I have left to try are 7. Can I divide by 7? No, the closest multiple of 7 I can think of is 56, which is 7 and 8, and I can't divide by 8 either. So that's it. My factors of 54 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18, and 27, and 54, of course. Finally, for 20, go ahead and set up your factor spider. Start with the smallest factor, that's 1. It gives you the biggest factor, 20 divided by 1 is 20, so we've got a pair. Next, we'll try the next smallest number, 20 divided by 2. Yeah, that divides by 2, and it's 10. Does 20 divide by 3? No, the closest multiple of 3 I can think of is 21, which would be 7. So, skip 3. Can we divide by 4? Yes, 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we've got all of our factors. There's nothing left to try between 4 and 5. So let's put them in order here. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10. And of course, don't forget 20. We'll get back to finding factors in a minute, but let's now look at prime numbers. As we've said before, prime numbers are the numbers that have exactly two factors. That's one and the number itself. Then you could go looking for other factors, but you won't find any. So prime numbers, rather than looking like spiders with legs with matching shoes, they actually look a bit more like aliens with antenna like this. Some helpful tricks to check for factors when you think a number's prime, but you're not sure if it has any other factors, are as follows. The first trick is that if a number can't divide by some value, then it can't divide by any multiple of that value either. For example, if a number can't divide by 2, so an odd number, it can't divide by 2, then it also can't divide by any other even number. It can't divide by 4, 6, 8, 10, or so on. We'll demonstrate that in a minute. Similarly, if a number can't divide by 3, that means it also couldn't divide by 6, 9, and 12. Three's times tables. Also, if it can't divide by 5, that means it couldn't divide by 10, 15, or 20 either. I hope you understand that. I'll demonstrate in a minute. The second trick for checking for factors is that if you start with the smallest factors and finding the biggest factor pairs, you can stop looking for factors when you've reached a pair which is smaller than the number you've just divided by. Now, I'm going to need to demonstrate that, as, but you're going to want to write these tricks down because once you understand them, you'll find them very helpful. So let's get into an example. 
How about 37? First of all, let's think about all of the possible factors of the number 37. And there's a lot of them. Any number from 1 to 37. But by using these tricks, we're going to eliminate a lot of these possibilities quite quickly. First of all, starting with the lowest possible factor, 37 does divide by 1. And when we divide 37 by 1, we get the highest factor, which is 37. So I've got a pair of factors, like a pair of antennae, like my factor alien up here. But is 37 a prime factor alien? Or is it a spider? Are there more legs that I need to put shoes on? Let's try. Can we divide 37 by 2? No, because 37 is definitely an odd number. It has an odd number in the units, so it can't divide by 2. If it can't divide by 2, it can't divide by any of the other even numbers. So as you can see, I've blacked all of those out. They're not possible factors for 37. You could try all of them if you like, but you'd be wasting your time. If you want to hit pause and give it a go, feel free, but I'm going to keep going. Next, I'm going to try 3 because it's the next smallest possible factor. Does 37 divide by 3? No. 36 divides by 3, that would be 12, but 37 does not divide by 3. So I'll black out the 3, and I'll black out all of the other multiples of 3 as well. You see how I'm getting rid of all of the possible factors quite quickly here? Next, I'm going to try 5. It's the next possible factor, but 37 cannot divide by 5. The closest number I can think of that can divide by 5 is 35. And 35 divided by 5 is 7. So the factor pair for 35 is still higher, so I'm going to keep going. But 37 itself does not divide by 5. So I'll black out the 5, and I'll black out all the multiples of 5. So the next possible factor I'm going to try is 7. And as I've just said, 35 divides by 7, but we're not talking about 35 here. We're talking about 37. 37 does not divide by 7. But if I tried dividing 35 by 7, I'd get an answer of 5. And that answer is smaller than 7. That means that I don't need to try any of the other factors because if 11, 13, 17, or 19, or so on, were factors of 37, when I divide by any of these values, I would get an answer that is smaller, which would mean that they would have to have already been found. And I've tried everything up until now, so it's a prime number. It's got no other factors, so it's got no other legs. Rather than a factor spider, we've drawn a prime factor alien. Let's try this now with a few smaller numbers so they're a bit easier for you. Which of the following numbers are prime? Is 5 prime? Well, let's look at all the possibilities. 5 can divide by 1, and the answer is 5. So it's got those two factors, but so do all prime numbers. Can 5 divide by 2? No, 5 divided by 2 would be like 2.5. Can 5 divide by 3? No, that would be 1 point something. So now my answer is actually smaller than the number I tried dividing by. I don't even need to try dividing by 4, because I know that dividing by 4 will give me a smaller answer than dividing by 3, and I have no smaller factors for 5. So I've already got all my factors for 5. 5 is not a spider. 5 is an alien. It's a prime number. What about 1? The possible factors of 1 are just 1. There is no other factor for 1. So although 1 is a factor of 1, and if I divide 1 by 1, I get 1, 1 is not a prime number. If I tried to draw a factor alien for this, I would end up with just one weird-looking antennae. So 1 is not a prime number. Prime numbers must have two factors. What about the number 3? It's got three possible factors. 3 can divide by 1, and the answer is 3. 3 could not divide by 2, because that would give 1.5, a decimal answer. So 3 has two factors. 3 is also a prime number. What about 4? 4 could divide by 1, and the answer is 4. 4 could divide by 2, and the answer is itself. 
but 4 can't divide by 3. Still, we can see that 4 has got 3 factors. It's got one repeated factor, but altogether it's got 3 factors. So 4 is not a prime number. In fact, are there any even prime numbers? Because they could all divide by 2, right? Well, 2 is a prime number, but there are no other even prime numbers. How about multiples of 3? Are any multiples of 3 prime? Well, yeah, we have 3, but only 3. 6 isn't prime, for example, because it could divide by 1, 6, 2, and 3. 9 is not prime, for example, because it could divide by 1, 9, and 3. So all other multiples of 3, apart from 3 itself, are not prime, because they divide by 3. How can we check if a value is prime then? Well, we've just been over how we could check if a value is prime or not by, by checking if they have any factors other than one or themselves. But as I was explaining that, you might have noticed that we don't need to check every number. We can just check if the number divides by any of the prime numbers smaller than it. Because of course, if it divides by a prime number, it also divides by any multiple of that prime number but there's no sense in us checking if it divides by all numbers. And of course, if it doesn't have any other factors, it would be prime. Now, to make sure that you are able to check for prime numbers, here's a little activity that I'll start with you, but I'm going to need you to finish this on your own. So go ahead and hit pause now if you need time to set up a 10 by 10 table with the numbers 1 to 100 written in it. Now, in this table, we are going to cross out all of the non-prime numbers. And as we go through, I'm going to highlight the numbers that are prime. You're going to want to do this in pencil, however, because we always make mistakes on this. So starting with 1. 1 is not prime, remember. It's not an alien. It would only have one antennae because it's only got one factor. 1 and 1. 2 is prime. It only divides by 1 and 2. But all of the other multiples of 2 are not prime because they divide by 1 themselves as well as 2. So I'm crossing out 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And you see the nice pattern it makes in my table here? We can go ahead and cross it out like this and save ourselves a bunch of time. Next, let's try 3. Is 3 prime? Yes, it divides by 1 and 3 and no other factors. So I'll highlight 3. And all other multiples of 3 are not prime because all other multiples of 3 divide by 1 themselves as well as 3. So I'm going to go ahead and black out all the multiples of 3. That's 6, then 9, then 12 is already gone, then 15, then 18, then 21. To make this quicker for yourself, you can just go ahead and count 1, 2, 3 and cross it out. 1, 2, 3 and cross it out. Right? The next multiple of 3 is 1, 2, 3, 24. It's already dark. 1, 2, 3, 27 is already dark. 1, 2, 3, 30 is already dark. Then 33, 36, 39, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and color in all the multiples of 3. Okay? I've got all my multiples of 3. I'm on to the next possible prime number now, which is 5. And 5 can only divide by 1 and 5. It doesn't divide by 2 or 3 or 4. So 5 is prime. But none of the multiples of 5, apart from 5, are prime. Because they all divide by 1, themselves, and 5. So, crossing out all of the multiples of 5, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, I'm sure you're noticing a pattern here. So this is where I'm going to leave you. Go ahead and cross out all the multiples of 5 and carry on identifying the prime number and looking for multiples of that number in this table to cross out. Go ahead and hit pause so you can finish that off and hit play when you're ready to compare your answers with me. Okay, I hope you hit pause so that you can finish that off for yourself. There's no point in just copying my answers. You're not going to remember them, but by going through this process, you'll remember how to look for them. 
So here are my prime numbers. Have you got the same ones as me? Make sure you list them out as well to make sure it's really nice and clear and you're more likely to recognize and remember them the more times you do write them out. So I've got prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, and 97. Now, I hope I haven't got a mistake there. Double check, sometimes I do, and please feel free to comment it if you find one. Otherwise, let's move on to some practice now. So here are a list of numbers that I would like you to find all of the factors for. So that's making a factor spider. And then once you've got your factor spider with your factors in order on those pairs of feet, those pairs of factor shoes, go ahead and list those factors out and highlight the prime numbers. So see if you can recognize which ones are prime. Go ahead and hit pause, copy the questions, draw your factor spiders, list your factors out in order. Don't forget to include one and the number itself and highlight the prime factors. I hope you had a chance to hit pause because here come the answers. For question A, 28 has got factors 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28, and 2 and 7 are the primes. For B, 34 has got factors 1, 2, 17, and 34, and 2 and 17 are prime numbers. Question C should be easy then. As we just said, 17 is a prime number, so its only factors are 1 and 17. Of course, 17 is prime. I hope you didn't highlight 1 as being prime. Question D, 48 has got factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48, but the only prime numbers there are 2 and 3. If you notice, all of the other factors are some multiple of 2 or some multiple of 3. 56 has got factors 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 14, 28, and 56, but the prime factors are 2 and 7. Question F, 72 has got the factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 18, 24, 36, and 72, with prime factors 2 and 3. Question G, 102 has got the factors 1, 2, 3, 6, 17, 34, 51, and 102. And the primes are 2, 3, and 17. Question H, 93 has got factors 1, 3, 31, and 93. Not many there, because 3 and 31 are both prime numbers. Notice that 93 is the same thing as 3 times 31. It's the product of these two prime numbers. We'll get into that later. Question I. 120 has got all of these factors. And notice that all of these numbers are some multiple of either 2, 3, or 5. Question J. 83. It's a prime number, so it's only got factors 1 and 83. Question G, 64, has got factors 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. You might have written 8 twice because 64 divided by 8 is 8. However, we only need to write it down once as a factor. And finally, H, 77 has got factors 1, 7, 11, and 77. Again, there's not many factors in this case because both 7 and 11 are prime numbers. And notice that 77 is equal to 7 times 11. It's a product of these two prime factors. So how did you do? I hope you enjoyed that lesson and found it helpful. If you have any doubts, please let me know. And of course, let me know if you think I've made any mistakes. I'm always open to discussing them and trying to learn from them. Otherwise, just keep practicing and I'll see you soon.